So now we found our reactions. So let's write our reactions here. So our AY was 13.5 kilonewtons. Our AX was zero kilonewtons. And our BY was 16.5 kilonewtons. So what we can do is we can write our shear functions and our moment functions. What we need to do is we need to cut the beam into sections. So we'll have one section here, second section, and then we can have a third section. And we can pick this side. So we have one section, second section, and then we'll have our third section. Let's do our first section. So we can redraw, we redraw our beam. So we have our beam here with a pin support. Our AY was 13.5 kilonewtons. So let's write our shear in the negative direction. So we can go V1 and we'll write our moment. We can draw our moment in the positive direction. And we'll call it M1. And then we have our distance, which will be X1. So let's write our shear function, our shear as a function of X1. So we have our V1 in the negative direction acting down, so negative V1, and we have a positive 13.5 going up. So plus 13.5 kilonewtons, and that will be equal to zero. So our V1 will be equal to 13.5 kilonewtons. And then we can write our M1, our M is a function of X1. We have a positive M1, so we can write positive M1, and we have our 13.5 kilonewtons acting in the negative direction at a distance of x1. So we can write negative 13.5 kilonewtons multiplied by x1. So will be equal to zero. So our m1 will be equal to 13.5 x1 kilonewton meters. So now we found our m1 and our v1 for any distance here. So this will be our x1. So let's find our x2. Let's find our x2. So let's redraw our beam. We have our distributed load. And this was 12 kilonewtons per meter. So we have our shear, our negative shear, and we'll call this V2. And we have a positive moment, and we'll call this M2. This is X2, and this distance up to here is 1.5 meters. So we can write our shear as a function of X2. We have our negative V2. We have our positive 13.5 kilonewtons going up. And we have a negative distributed load. So we have a negative 12 kilonewtons per meter, and our distance is x2. So multiplied by x2 meters. So will be equal to zero. So our v2, our v2 will be equal to 13.5 kilonewtons minus 12x2 kilonewtons. This is our v2, and then we can find our m2. So we have our positive m2, we have a negative 13.5 kilonewtons acting in the clockwise direction so negative 13.5 kilonewtons and our distance our distance here to this point is 1.5 plus x2 so we can write multiplied by 1.5 plus x2 meters and then we have our distributed load acting halfway and this will go in the anti-clockwise direction so it'll be a positive and our force we already know so this will be our force from the rectangle so we can write that again. So we can write plus 12x2 kilonewtons. And our distance is this, which is x2 over 2, right? It's halfway of x2. So we can write multiplied by x2 over 2. And all of this will be equal to 0. We don't have any other moments acting or any other forces. If we solve for m2, this will be our moment for x2. We can find any value. If we go back to our beam, we can find any value between our x2 point and our x1 point. So now let's find the last one that we need to do is this section. So this one would be pretty straightforward. We can do the last section. So let's redraw. So we have a roller and we've cut the beam at this point. And we just have one reaction, which is 16.5 kilonewtons. We have our shear. We're gonna flip the shear. So it's gonna be, this is gonna be V3. And we're gonna flip our moment. So our moment's gonna go in this direction, which will be M3. And our distance will be X3. So let's do our shear as a function of X3. We have a positive V3. We also have a positive 16.5 kilonewtons. This will be equal to zero. So our V3, will be equal to negative 16.5 kilonewtons. And our M, we'll solve for M as a function of X3. We have a negative M3. We have a 16.5 kilonewtons acting in this direction, right? And this distance is X3. 
So we can write positive 16.5 kilonewtons multiplied by x3. And this will be equal to zero. We don't have any other forces. So we can write m3 is equal to 16.5 x3 kilonewton meters. So now we found our moment and our shear function for all three sections, for all three sections of the beam. And then from here, we can draw our shear and bending moment diagrams. So we can use our functions um, to solve our shear and our, our moment at any point. So for our beam, we found any point up to here will be x1. We can find any point here using x2, and we can use any point here using x3. So if we look at our formulas, our v1 is always going to be 13.5 kilonewtons. So what that means, if we go to our diagram, we'll have an increase of 13.5. This will be 13.5 kilonewtons. And then we'll go across until we reach our 1.5 meter point, And this will be 13.5. So if we look at our V as a function of X2, now we have any point between our X2 value. So if we consider that this point is zero, and this point will be 2.5 meters, right? This total distance is 2.5 meters. Let's say we plug in zero meters here, 12 multiplied by zero, this will cancel out and we're left with 13.5 kilonewtons. So that will be, right, this point, we have 13.5 kilonewtons, which is what we have. So if we plug in, let's say we plug in 2.5 meters here, what we'll get is negative 16.5 kilonewtons. So this point, if we come here, this will, we'll draw a point here, and this point will be negative 16.5 kilonewtons. And this will be because we have a distributed load, a constant distributed load, so this will linearly decrease until we reach our 16.5. This will go across, and then we'll get back to zero here. And what we can do is we can find this distance where our shear value is zero as well. We can find that point. So how we find that point, our shear we know is zero. So our shear, this is gonna be zero. So if we rewrite our V2 and we set our V2 as zero, we can find this distance. We can find this distance. So let's just rewrite our V2 over here. So our V2 is equal to zero. That means we can write zero is equal to 13.5 minus 12X. So x2 will be equal to 1.125 meters. So this point will be 1.125 meters. And then we know, we already know this point. This distance we already know, which is 1.5 meters. And this point, this point we already know, which is one meter. And this point we'll know is 1.375 meters. All right, so we can use these formulas to find any point. Now let's let's find our bending moment points. So if we look at our bending moment, let's look at our M1. We have our M1. So let's plug in a zero here. If we plug in a zero, this will all cancel out. We'll just be left with zero. So our bending moment will be, will be zero at the beginning. And if we plug in, we can plug in here uh, 1.5 meters. So if we plug in 1.5 meters, if we plug in 1.5, we'll get 13.5 times 1.5, and this will be equal to 20.25 kilonewton meters. So if we come back to our diagram, we'll find this point here will be 20.25 kilonewton meters. This will just increase linearly. If we use this formula, we can find any moment along this point. We know our shear is zero at 1.125 meters. So that's where our maximum bending moment will be. We max, this will be our maximum moment. So if we plug in 1.25 into here, so we have 1.125 into this equation and we plug it in here as well, 1.125, we'll get 27.84 kilonewton meters. This will be roughly here and this will be a curve. So this point here is 20. 7.84 kilonewton meters. And then we know that this total length is 2.5 meters. We can plug 2.5 into, into this equation. This will be 16.5 kilonewton meters. So this will curve until we reach roughly 16.5 kilonewton meters. And then we'll have a straight line till we reach zero. If we want to find any point along here, we can use our M3 equation, but we don't need to use that. We don't need to use that. And that's it. That's how we can draw and analyze each section of for a simply supported beam.